And when did you discover your own autism? Um, I think I had to be like 18, 19 years old. And I started seeing that if I'm standing in a line at McDonald's and I hear laughter or whatever, I would try to jump on the person that's laughing because I think they was laughing about me. Not necessarily saying that they knew me or, or they was talking about me. It's just the inner thought that I was having in my head that they was laughing and joking about Marcus. So I had to defend myself. So mm -hmm. I, I realized that something was really wrong when I was doing or displaying those type of actions. Mm -hmm. Did you have friends at that point? Uh, <laughs> I did have friends. Um, not a lot of them. Not a lot of them. My friends' stories go in and out. It's like movies. They happen, little action, then we don't be friends no more. It's like more so like my past relationships. It's like that too. Like we'll be in a relationship and then you may not want to be able to deal with my behavior. You may not be able to deal with the autism side of things. So you want to move on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's life. Is there anything that you struggle with on your end with social skills? Yes. Um, I still, even though I'm a people's person, some circles I don't like to be around as you know what I mean, as far as communication is concerned. I like better doing video than some personal face-to-face -face, um, type of situations because I could be in my comfort zone. I could be in my room or whatever have you in my space. I'm not necessarily in your space and still have to speak to you face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. um, so some colors still get to me, even though I'm a music producer, some noises still can be a trigger for me. Um, you know, certain foods, I still don't eat because of the color texture of the food, even at almost 40 years old. I don't, I think people think that when you become verbal, you totally lose autism. And that's a myth and that's a lie. That's not true. You, you become verbal, God bless you. Yes, God is, you know, allowing you to have that step, but you still have autism for the rest of your life. You still need certain people and certain positive auras and things in your corner so you can continue to excel through your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually, Marcus, sorry, I want to jump back to the thing you were talking about before about, um, you know, jumping on people's backs and realizing that you were different, right? Mm -hmm. So did someone actually tell you that you had autism? Like, how did you find out? Um, a girlfriend of mine told me that I might have bipolar or I'm schizophrenic at that time. So her father, I guess, was a psych, uh, uh, the psych, psychology or... Psychiatrist? Yes, so he said that I'm not showing signs of schizophrenia. He said, he said that he has autism. And he said that he has uh, a behavior case that he don't know how to deal with or he don't know how to control on his own. So we may want to talk about putting him back on some type of medication that can help deal with his um, mood and his temper. And did you go back on medication at that point? I was trying... I was trying. I did. I was trying. That's where Seroquel came in. I was trying. Mm -hmm. First, we started at 50 milligrams. Then went to 100 milligrams. Then it went to 550 milligrams. So, I mean, I mean, you know, based off his recommendation, because he was, you know, a psychologist. Yeah, that word. Psychiatrist. He was that. Yeah. He was a psychiatrist. So, we was basing it off his medical recommendation off my past and current behavior. Mm -hmm. But leading up to that point, did you always feel different? Yeah, because I, you know, people never wanted me to sit with them on the bus. I could never sit with people at lunch because, you know, I'm drooling and, you know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. having issues with my bowel movements and stuff of that nature in class or, in, or at lunch and stuff of that nature. So people was always making fun of me. Nobody wanted to sit next to me. And then the little, again, the little friends I did have, we never had the same lunch. So I would see them beginning of school, at school. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. no, no passings of the halls because I was in the special education classes and they was in the regular classes. Mm-hmm. So. Right. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.